Hello everyone. Welcome to Let's Know the Botany series where you will get everything about plant sciences. Please like, share and subscribe the channel. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about biofertilizers and its types. Myself, Dr. Sujit Jadhav, Assistant Professor in Botany from SBR College Maswar, Talokaman, District Satara. So biofertilizers, as far as they are concerned in nature, there are a number of useful soil microorganisms which can help plants to absorb nutrients. Their utility can be enhanced with human interventions by selecting efficient organisms, culturing them and adding them to soil directly or through seeds. The cultured microorganisms packed in some carrier material for easy application in the field are called as biofertilizers. Biofertilizers are living organisms of bacterial, fungal and algal origin. Their mode of action differs and can be applied alone or in combination with each other. Biofertilizers fix atmospheric nitrogen in the soil and root nodules of legume crops and make it available to the plants. They solubilize the insoluble forms of phosphates like tricalcium, iron and aluminium phosphates into available forms. They clean away phosphate from soil layers. They produce hormones and anti-metabolites which promote root growth. They decompose organic matter and help in mineralization or in soil. When applied to seed or soil, biofertilizers increases the availability of nutrients and improve the yield by 10 to 25 percent without adverse effect to the soil and to the environment. So in next slide we will discuss about types and features of biofertilizers. As far as these biofertilizers they have been concerned they can be classified along with the different types of microorganisms which we are going to use them as a biofertilizers. Amongst them the bacterial biofertilizers like rhizobium, azospirillum, azetobacter these are the examples from bacterial biofertilizers then mycorrhiza from fungal biofertilizers then blue green algae and azula which are algal biofertilizers and frankia which is actinomycetes biofertilizers. So these are different biofertilizers which are mostly cultured and multiplied in the laboratory. However, blue green algae and azula can be mass multiplied in the field. So as far as these biofertilizers are concerned, rhizobium is relatively more effective and widely used biofertilizer. Rhizobium in association with legumes fix ni atmospheric nitrogen. The legumes and their symbiotic association with the rhizobium bacterium results in the formation of root nodules that fix atmospheric nitrogen. Successful nodul nodulation of leguminous crop by rhizobium largely depends on the availability of a compatible stain for a particular legume. Rhizobium population in the soil is dependent on the presence of legume crops in field. In the presence of legumes, the population of rhizobium in the soil diminishes. Then the another biofertilizer that is azospirillum. Azospirillum is known to have a close associative symbiosis with the higher plant system. These bacteria have association with cereals like sorghum, maize, pearl millet, finger millet, foxtail millet and other minor millets and also fodder grasses. Then the another biofertilizer that is blue-green algae and azetobacter. As far as azetobacter is concerned, it is a common soil bacterium. Azetobacter crococum is present widely in Indian soils. Soil organic matter is the important factor that decides the growth of this bacteria. Then another one that is blue-green algae, in short what we call it as a BGA, they are referred 
to as a rice organisms because of their abundance in the rice field many species belonging to the genera tolipothrix nostoc scrizothrix colothrix anobinosis and plectonema are abundant in tropical conditions most of the nitrogen fixation fixing blue green algae are filamentous consisting of chain of vegetative cell including specialized cells called heterocysts which functions as a micronodule for synthesis of nitrogen fixing machinery then this is the table which shows different biofertilizers which are suited for different crops and which gives benefits to that particular crop as far as for example rhizobium strains they are associated with legumes like pulses groundnuts soybean and it benefits for 10 to 35% of increase in the yield uh, as far as uh, nitrogen fixation is concerned and it uh, gives fodders gives better results leaves residue residual nitrogen in the soil so these are the benefits given by one strain of rhizobium then azotobacter similarly gives uh, 10 to 15% of yield increase which also controls certain diseases in the crops like legumes which including dry land crops non leguminous crop, crops actually then azospirillum uh, which also increases 10 to 20% of the yield which gives fodder gives higher or enriches fodder response then produces growth promoting substances it can applied to legumes as co inoculant uh, this azospirillum may be useful for non leguminous plants like maize barley oats sorghum millet sugarcane rice etc then blue green algae and azula they are useful for rice or wetland crops they increases 20 to 30 kg nitrogen per hectare azula singly can give biomass up to 40 to 50 tons and fix 30 to 100 kg nitrogen per hectare and also it is helpful for reducing soil alkalinity can be used for fishes as feed they have growth promoting hormonal effects likewise mycorrhizal that is what we call it as a bank fungi they may also useful for many trees then some crops and some ornamental plants which increases 30 to 50% of yield enhances uptake of uh, phosphorus zinc sulfur and water usually they inoculated to seedlings so these are the different benefits of biofertilizers as far as application of biofertilizers is concerned uh, we can apply these biofertilizers as a seed treatment where rhizobium azospirillum azotobacter and phosphobacteria are applied as seed treatment each packet of inoculants is mixed with 200 ml of rice gruel or jaggery solution the seeds required for 1 hectare are mixed in the slurry so as to have uniform coating of the inoculants over the seeds and then shed dried for 30 minutes the treated seeds should be used within 24 hours one packet of inoculants is sufficient to treat to 10 kg of seeds then another useful application of uh, biofertilizers in giving seedling root tips this method is used for transplanted crops five packets of 1 kg of the inoculants are required for 1 hectare and mixed with 40 liters of water the root portion of the seedlings it is a dipped in the solutions of uh, for 5 to 10 minutes and then transplanted azospirillum is used for seedling root dip particularly for rice crop then another application as a soil treatment 4 kg each of the recommended biofertilizers are mixed in 200 gram kilograms of compost and kept overnight this mixture is incorporated in the soil at the time of sowing or planting then we will see different uses of these different biofertilizers first one we will observe about vam fungi or vam biofertilizers 
the inoculums should be applied 2 to 3 cm below the soil at the time of sowing. The seeds are sown or cuttings planted just above the vang inoculums so that the roots may come in contact with the inoculum and cause infection. Bulk inoculum of 100 grams is sufficient for 1 meter square area. Seedlings raised in the polythene bags need 5 to 10 gram of bulk inoculums for each bag. At the time of planting of saplings, VAM inoculums is to be applied at the rate of 20 grams per seedlings in each spot. In the existing tree, inoculum of 200 gram is required for each tree. Then another one that is use of blue green algae that is algal cultures is applied as dried flakes at 10 kg per hectare over the standing water in field rice. This is done 2 days after transplanting in loamy soils and 6 days after planting in clay soils. The field is kept waterlogged for few days immediately after algal application. The biofertilizer is to be applied for 3 to 4 consecutive seasons in the same field. Then another uh, use of biofertilizer that is we are going to discuss about Azula where green, green manures like Azula is applied at the rate of 0.6 to 1 kilogram per meter square that is 6.25 to 10 tons per hectare at and incorporated before transplanting of rice. Azula is applied at 100 grams per meter square that is 1.25 tons per hectare one to three days after transplanting of rice and allowed to multiply it for 25 to 30 days. Azula fronts can be incorporated into the soil at the time of first weeding. Then as far as precautions are concerned, while using biofertilizers, biofertilizers packets need to be stored in cool and dry place away from direct sunlight and heat. Biofertilizers are live products and require care in the storage. Other chemicals should not be mixed with the biofertilizers. Right combination of biofertilizers have to be used. While purchasing, one should ensure that each packet is provided with necessary information like name of the product, name of the crop for which intended, name and address of the manufacturer, date of manufacturing, date of expiry, batch number and instructions for use. The packet has to be used before its expiry only for the specified crops and by the recommended method of application. Both nitrogenous and phosphatic biofertilizers are to be used to get the best results. It is important to use the biofertilizers along with chemical fertilizers and organic manures. Biofertilizers are not replacement of fertilizers but can supplement plant nutrient requirement. So these are some precautions one should take and some of the tips which are much important before using uh, the biofertilizers or which give, gives you a good response that is biofertilizer products must contain good effective strain in appropriate population and should be free from contaminating microorganisms. Select right combination of biofertilizers and use before expiry date. Use suggested methods of application and apply at appropriate time as per the information provided on the label. For seed treatment, adequate adhesives should be used for better results. For problematic soils, use corrective methods like lime or gypsum pelleting of seeds or correction of soil pH by use of lime. Ensure the supply of phosphorus and other nutrients. So this is all about biofertilizers, their types and their uses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do not forget to subscribe the channel and comment in the comment box. Thank you. Thank you very much.